bubble. Unquestionably the best bubble in boxing. Definitely the most expensive bubble in boxing. But we do it properly and uh, it's great to see all the fighters here. Fit, well and healthy ahead of a huge night on Saturday night. Back at Wembley Arena, a world championship triple header and a great opportunity for women's boxing to carry on progressing live on Sky Sports in the UK and of course live across America on the zone as well. I remember talking to Katie Taylor about my thoughts behind this card and I got it so wrong initially when I told her that we should do an all women's card. And she looks at me like she was gonna chin me with a left hook. And she said, it's not about that, it's about boxing. It's not men's boxing, it's not women's boxing. And the beauty of this card is although we have three women's world championship fights, we also have three really good men's fights, domestic fights, young talent coming through, big super middleweight clash as well. And this is a great fight. This fight takes us back to the mindset of fight camp, which is no easy fights. Thomas Whitaker Hart against Jermaine Springer, undefeated fighters, great fight, and also the opportunity for what may be a next generational talent in Thomas Whitaker Hart to step up the levels in a real fight, an opportunity for Jermaine Springer to take a chance and propel himself to the televised stage. Tony Bellew's charge, former GB squad member, podium squad member, great 175 pounder. Tom, I'm gonna to start with you. Just the feeling of speaking to your team in a camp, excitement that you're actually in a real fight this weekend. Yeah, um, I made up to have someone who's coming to win against me, so I feel like I, you'll get more out of me if you've got someone who's there who's ready to push me, so I'm excited really to show what I can do properly. Can it get a little bit lethargic or the lack of motivation when you're in with opponents, you know, it might have been coming in on a week's notice, a few days notice, ones that you know are levels below you and you know, sometimes won't always get the best out of you. Yeah, they're a bit negative. They're not really there to win. They're just on the back foot. But I feel like I know, well, I know Jermaine's going to come to win. So it's like, I know it's going to be exciting. Obviously, Jermaine, great young talent, going to be coming to win. But the pressure is always on these great amateurs and podium squad members to not just win, to make a statement. No pressure on this man here. Just a chance to completely transform his career. Do you feel the pressure to put in a great performance or is it just about winning on Saturday? Um, I'll put a good performance in anyway. It's not about the pressure. I don't really think too much into that. I've been doing this since I was a young boy, so it's all just take it in my stride and I'm just going to go with it. Jermaine, massive opportunity for you. I love these kind of fights because I know you will be doing everything you can to win on Saturday night. Yeah, like I said, Eddie, there's no pressure on me. I'm coming here to fight. Uh, obviously, I rate Tommy's a good fighter. I'm going to bring the fire. I'm here to spoil the party. Obviously, this moment for you, massive. From the first bell, you've got to make it count, haven't you? I mean, it's, it's, this is a golden opportunity. 100%. I can't leave the ring uh, disappointed, having regrets. I need to give everything I've got. And on Thomas, obviously, good fighter, great amateur pedigree as well. You rate him as a fighter, what have you got to do? You've got to make it ugly, you've got to put the pressure on him, you've got to turn up the heat. Yeah, I've got to put the pressure on him, got to make it into a real fight. I've, I've fought uh, unbeaten fighters before and I've gone there, gone there to win, so it's going to be the first time he's actually fought someone with uh, the same mindset as me coming to win. So, that's well, a massive opportunity for you and a big opportunity for Thomas Whitaker Hart as well to make a statement. Our first fight on Saturday night, Thomas Whitaker Hart against Jermaine Spring, 175 pounds. Great fight in the light heavyweight division. Gentlemen, I ask you to come up here for a head to head, please, with your masks, please. of Cash Farouk, <laughs> finally, third time lucky, finding his way into the ring. Uh, last time, we know your trainer came down. Um, anyone that, that doesn't know the story, of course, Cash Farouk was supposed to fight on the Lewis Ritson card. We couldn't find him a credible opponent. Then he was supposed to fight on the Alexander Usyk card and his uh, cut man got COVID uh, in, in a positive test. So the board pulled the fight. Now we have Angel Aviles here from Mexico. Great to welcome him. Cash Farouk, this is it. Are we going to see you in the ring on Saturday night? Fingers crossed, everything goes well. Right? You'll see me on Saturday night, putting on a good performance. Eh? How frustrating was it for you? I didn't get the chance and I messaged you, but I didn't see you that, that morning where 
You got the news, the board ruled you out of that fight. Huge card, Usyk against Chisora. Did you sort of go home after that and thinking, is my, is my break ever going to come? You know, I'm putting all this work in and I'm not getting the breaks. You no, know, I did honestly see it was a long night for me Friday night. I was about to go to my bed and I had a ping on my phone. And I was like, what's going on here? And I thought Matthew might tag me in something. <laughs> I had the tag me. In. I cashed off the bill, COVID, then I was, you know, I went to my trainer's room and, and always said, let me explain it to you. And, you know, it was, it was a long night for me. It's uh, Friday and Saturday morning, uh, all through the day. And, uh, but I brushed myself up, went back to gym on Sunday morning. And I was, I uh, continued on and, you know, I got thank you for getting me out this holiday as well. So I just, I just kept moving on. Well, no disrespect to your, your yeah. former opponent. I think we have a, a tougher opponent in front of you on, on Saturday night in Angel Aviles. More experience, number of championship fights, world title challenger yeah. as well. Expecting a good fight from what I've seen and, and looking at the footage, looks, looks crafty, looks skillful and looks like I can punch a bit as well. Yeah, every fight's a hard fight. That's the way my mind says. Like, you know, I take, I take every fight as hard. So, you know, he's going to be there all night and he's going to bring the best out of me. So I'm expecting a hard, hard night as well, but I expect myself to be the winner. Angel Aviles, welcome. Um, come over, a lot of experience. Um, we know that every time we bring a Mexican fighter here to the UK, they give us a great fight. Is that what we should expect from you on Saturday night? Bienvenido, Miguel, primeramente. Um, sabemos que tienes mucha experiencia. Cada vez que traemos un mexicano aquí, siempre vienen con mucha experiencia y nos ponen una gran pelea. ¿Eso esperas también hacerlo aquí? Claro, eso espero eh, hacer una buena pelea y gracias por invitarme a esta ciudad. Yeah, of course, that's what you can expect, a good fight. And I have to say thank you very much for bringing me to, to this city to fight. You have a lot of championship experience over the, the championship uh, distance. Is that going to be important to you? Cash Farouk, obviously former British champion as well, but you're very experienced and look like you have a great engine to go to full 10 rounds on Saturday. Obviamente tienes mucha experiencia uh, tener um, peleas de campeonatos. También es un um, campeonato, aquí es un campeón británico. Supongo que su experiencia de, de pelear y ir a la distancia te, te viene bien también, supongo. Sí, también este, es una buena pelea porque sí llevo como cuatro peleas de campeonato y esta, esa diez rounds también espero, espero ganar esta pelea. Yes, I've, I've had some good fights and I've had four fights at championship level. Um, so I'm used to going the distance and I expect to win this fight. Thank you very much, Angel. Good luck to you on Saturday. Last Thanks. word for you, Cash, as well. Just excited to get out there. Want to make the most of it. Ready to put in a great performance. I gave you the big build-up yeah. at the last press conference. I don't need to do it again. Yeah. We rate you so highly. We want to see a great performance from you on Saturday night. Can we expect that? Can we expect a fantastic Cash Farouk? Yeah, 100%. You know, I've been in the gym since right through summer. I know you've been out. No, no pine. No, oh, there's, there's no clubs open, but... I'm just talking about just in general doing anything. I've just been coming to the gym, home, sleeping, waking up all the moment, road work. And this is it. I'm here now and uh, I'm ready to put on a good performance Saturday night. And uh, fingers crossed everything goes well. I'm sure you will. Can't wait for this one. Cash Farouk against Angel Aviles, WBA Continental Championship this Saturday night live on Sky Sports and Zone. Gentlemen, if you can come up here for a head-to-head, -head, please. Chris, uh, this is a cracker. This is a cracker. I mean, sometimes the stars just align to make a fight. We had, of course, John Doherty set to face Jack Armfield and Jack Cullen set to face um, Cox. All of a sudden, Cox gets cut. Um, Armfield's out with, I believe, appendicitis. And what do you do? You say, well, how about John Doherty against Jack Cullen? Yes, please. Both guys, yes, please. We've got a great fight. I love this fight. I love this fight. John, I'm going to start with you. I don't know um, what it is about you, but somehow you find a way to dislike virtually every opponent you face. I mean, I don't know if you're playing the game, you're building your profile, you're getting yourself mentally prepared for a war, but you tell every opponent the same thing. They're going to sleep, they're getting knocked out. What, what is it with Jack Cullen, or is he just another man in your way? He's just another man in my way. Um... This is towards a British title, and um, he's in my way, and he's stopping me, and I'm going to go through him. 
like Felix Cash done and like all the number boys done. I'm going to go through Jack Collins Saturday night and put on a big performance and put on a standout performance in the Super League division. You had a great performance last time out against Anthony Fox and, you know, sitting in the press conference at fight camp for that fight, we said all the same things. You've never boxed at the level professionally of Anthony Fox. This is going to be a big test for you. You went in there, you won every round, you, you stopped him like many haven't. But do you, do you admit to yourself that this is a much bigger step up than Anthony Fox? And, and, you know, if that was a big step up for you now, this is the next level of test for you against a very experienced fighter. Yeah, definitely. I've not taken nothing away from Jack Cullen, but I'm levels above him. I know I can't say it in the pro game because I've never showed it yet, but my last performance before I knocked out Anthony Fox was a very bad performance. Uh, at the time, I thought I boxed well, but I looked back and I'd done a lot of mistakes wrong, and um, Jack Cullen looking at that fight will think, oh, I'll beat John all day long. He's got another thing coming, because all I'm going to do in there one day is put him asleep. as simple as that. You tend to be very, very aggressive in your fights. Is that something that, you know, we didn't see that from you as much in the amateur game, but you have made statements coming out in a pro game and you've always said the same thing before every fight. And to be fair, on 90% of occasions, you've delivered that as well. Is, is, have you seen a big difference in your transition to the professional game? Because you are much, much more aggressive. And is the plan just to go at him from the first bell on Saturday night? My game plan's just to smash him about the ring, yeah, basically. I, he quit a few times. I watched him quit against an Irish boy when he turned pro in 2018. And he's going to quit again on Saturday. Uh, Felix Cash made him quit. He turned his back. So I just can't wait to get in on Saturday night and show everyone. I'm not just going to go in there and show them my raw power, what else I can do. I know I can box. And when somebody's in there, what can take my power? And then I'll have to adapt and box. But I know for a fact Jack Cullen will quit on Saturday or either I'll knock him out. Jack, um, I guess you can't take it personally because he says the same thing to every opponent. I'm but not taking it personally. I think it's a lot of shit, to be honest with you. What he's got to realise is I'm not a middleweight anymore. I'm a super middle and I'm a big super middle. And I'm coming to win. Uh, I'm here. Obviously, you've given me another chance again. Matt Schumann gave me another chance. And I'm here to prove my point. And beating Don Do Do uh, John Doherty, I am going to prove my point. Show everybody how good I really am. I've not known you or Steve Wood to take, turn any opportunity down. I mean, it has to be said, Jamie Cox, although he was out for a while, has boxed at a much, much higher level than John Doherty. John Doherty, if he's aggressive, he can punch hard, but has very, very little experience in the pro game. Do you think he's looking past you a little bit compared to the championship fights that you've been in? I think so, yeah. He's, he's fought journeyman, you know. He's not fought no one decent yet, and he's going to see on fighting out how good I am. Everyone you fought decent is beat you and knocked you out. We'll see, won't we? You, you are decent. a clown. You're a knockout. Right? Yeah. You knock all these people I'm, out. Listen, we'll see I know I've fought Johnny Man. I'm saying I have fought Johnny Man. Yes, I agree with that. Every decent fight you fought, you'd be knocked out. Right, well, we'll see. And quit. That, won't we? And turn right, your back we'll and see, quit. You got beat off a 4 0 kid. You quit. You turn your back and quit. Go and have a look back at the camera. Against that Irish boy when you fought in that tournament, whatever it was. You fight. I, last, yeah. <laughs> I was fucking in and out of it in the fight within you 10 minutes. Did you turn your back? Did you turn exactly? I you won't turn, turn your my back. back against you. Let me tell you that. <laughs> you turn your back against Felix Cash as well. You're going down. You're, like a bitch. you're going down. You get a draw with uh, Zach Lee. Barely got a draw. Who I smashed twice in amateurs. You're getting smashed. Right, we'll you'll see. see. We'll see on fight night. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see on fight night. Nice one, Eddie. Thanks turn for your back. Um, this 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 fight. I appreciate it. The transition up to super middleweight. I mean, how you used to make middleweight, I don't know. I did feel like you were l lucky to get the draw against Chelly. But it was the you know it was the first time for you at super middle, bad style for you. Yeah, I think. bad style. Um, and obviously you you, le you learn by your mistakes, and I have learned a lot by my mistakes. I learned a lot from the last fight. And listen, this camp's gone perfect. No excuses. Me coming up to super middleweight. I'm coming up to super middleweight, and I'm coming to smash you. Do you how think you, that? How, how are you going to do it? Never you mind. I'm going to do it. How we'll are you going to smash me? For these little bad boys. You can't smash no one. You we'll quit we'll all the time. Fire night. Felix Castro has stopped you, son. Right. You quit. You like quit I on just Saturday. Said, like and I you'll said, see. I was a light, skinny, middleweight who was struggling. Middleweight. You're still the exact same. You look the exact same. What are we going to call him? You're getting put asleep on Saturday. Trust me. My, my words. I'm who coming was after eating you. ten minutes ago? It weren't you, were it? You were up in your room, trying to make wait. I'm bang on. We'll see. Let's get it on. I was actually watching our Netflix. Let's get it on. I was making way. Jack, last, last one for you. Um, 
you've, you've carved out a career for yourself in these TV fights. You put in some great performances. John has the benefit of you know, the contract, the amateur experience. For you, it is really a case of winner stays on, isn't it? Yeah, you must win this fight listen, on Saturday night. I need to win this fight. This is where I want to be, you know. I want to, I, I want to be signed up as well by a match stream, and how I'm going to get that is by beating him. Well, no. you certainly will do. And that John, ain't going to happen. Well, we'll see on fight night, won't we? John, finally, a few words from you. I'll tell you, you're obviously lacking in a bit of confidence. Nice and calm for Saturday night. I can't wait to smash him to pieces on Saturday night. Okay. Let's go. British title eliminator. What a fight. Jack Cullen against John Doherty. Do not blink. Live on Sky Sports and The Zone on Saturday. Gentlemen, for a socially distanced head-to-head, -head, please. Thank you, guys. The first of our three women's world championship triple headers, of course, the WBA championship between Rachel Ball and Horgalina Giuliani on Saturday night. Great opportunity, great fight. I want to thank Horg Giuliani and her team as well for taking this fight at late notice after, of course, Ebony Bridges had to pull out with a, a shoulder injury. Great that Rachel still gets the opportunity to fight. This time, she comes out with a current world champion in Gianni, the current reigning IBF super flyweight world champion as well. Rachel, we'll start with you. I remember seeing you walking around fight camp, just getting the opportunity to fight in an eight rounder. You couldn't believe it against Shannon Courtney on Saturday night. You get a chance to challenge for your first world title. Yeah, every time I keep hearing people say it, it gets more and more real. Um, and it's, yeah, it's still crazy. And I'm just so grateful to be here. And I really have took this with both hands. I've done everything I can and I'm going to leave nothing in there on Saturday. I know that you know you're over the moon, you know, to get this opportunity, and you still can't believe it. But at what point do you say to yourself, "I've got it. I'm here, and I'm in the mix of so many great fights internationally, so many great fights domestically." You know, I mean, you got the Shannon Courtney rematch. You got Ellie Scottney looked great. You had Amy Timlin in a brilliant fight with Carly Skelly at Super Bantamweight. This just opens the door to fight after fight after fight after fight. If you can be crowned world champion on Saturday. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fantastic time to be a part of women's boxing. There's loads of fantastic girls coming through. Um, and it's an honour to be on, on this card with these incredible women as well. Now it's time to live up to those expectations and step up and deliver. I guess your fight with Shannon was, was all action. Everybody loved it as well. Is that, can we expect to see the same thing on Saturday? And do you feel the pressure? You know, we know that there's still the naysayers of women's boxing who, you know, they want to be proved wrong. Do you feel that pressure to go into the entertain or is that just the style of Rachel Ball and it's what you're going to do and go and grab this opportunity on Saturday? Do we expect another all-action performance? Yeah, yeah, every time. Every time you expect an all-action fight. Um, I felt that sometimes I did help, help back a little bit um, in the last fight, maybe because of the no crowds. Um, so I expect even more, even more this time. Absolute fireworks. I'm definitely going to deliver it. And finally, just one question as well on one of your former foes, Katerina Thanders, who you boxed as well. Obviously, a big disadvantage up at nine stone nine and this fight down at eight stone ten. But all action as well. And a fight between her and Terry Harper should be a classic. Yeah, yeah. After I fought um, Thanders, I was excited to think, yeah, Terry and Thanders could uh, have that, that match one day. And I'm glad it's finally here and I'm glad I can finally see it. Um, they're both very, very good women, very, very decorated athletes. And I can't wait to see them tear it up in there. Well, you might get a chance to watch that one after your fight. Orgelina, welcome, welcome. The new haircut. You know, uh, this is a big opportunity for you. Haven't boxed for a while. You are the reigning world champion as well, and a great time for women's boxing. Primeramente, me gusta tu corte de pelo, y obviamente es una gran oportunidad para ti. Eres ya es campeona del mundo, y qué oportunidad estar aquí y pelear para 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 esto. Bueno, primeramente, muchas gracias eh, bueno, por el corte, el corte de cabello. Eh, para mí es una oportunidad muy importante. Eh, y bueno, sobre todo, estoy muy agradecida de, de tener esta oportunidad y espero poder dar lo mejor de mí. So, first and foremost, thanks for the compliments on my, on my haircut. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for me, and, and it's an opportunity that I'm really looking forward to. So, I have to say, I'm really grateful for this. You are a reigning world champion. You move up in weight. You face someone in Rachel Ball who is very, very tall. 
Uh, she's much taller than all her opponents we saw in her last fight as well. Are you ready for a fast-paced fight on Saturday? Obviamente, tu rival um, ha subido de peso y o, tú has subido de peso y, y ella es muy alta y es, normalmente es mucho más alta que todos los rivales que ha tenido. ¿Estás lista para, para esto y también la rapidez de, de ella? Bueno, eh, yo sé que soy chiquitita. Eh, siempre me han tocado rivales altas, no tan altas como Rachel. Eh, pero bueno, eh, creo que estoy preparada para enfrentarme a cualquier boxeadora de cualquier tipo. So it's, it's true that I know I'm, a, I'm pretty small. I mean, I've been smaller than all the opponents that I've faced. I probably never fought somebody as tall as Rachel, but I'm up for fighting whatever opponent is put in front of me. Thank you, Jorgelina. And um, Rachel, finally for you, um, we always hear about your work as a social worker, and you know, I know that's very important in your life as well, but at what point does a breakthrough on Saturday night take your focus purely into the professional game and fighting big international and domestic fights? Is that the dream for you? I know you're passionate about your work as well, but Saturday changes everything, really, in that respect. It does. Um, you know what, I'll just take things as they come. Um, when, whenever my work starts to affect my boxing, I will stop it without a shadow of a doubt. And there's been times where I have been very stressed, very exhausted, but I've carried on doing it. Um, but now I've got a really, really good balance. So if ever there's a point where it is affecting it, 100% stop. But at the moment, I'm feeling the, the, the best type I've ever been in, the strongest, the fittest. So I can't even think about work while I'm here. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm here, so I'm in the bubble. So, yeah. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Saturday night, WBA World Championship, first of our triple header on Sky Sports and Design. If you could come up to these marks, please. It's the second of our World Championship fights this Saturday, and it is a fantastic fight in a fantastic division at the moment. Of course, we know that for any division or any sport to grow, we need these rivalries. And when you look at the 130-pound division at the moment, you have the great champions like Terry Harper, like Michaela Meyer, like Choi, and like Hamadouchi. Uh, but you also have the great contenders, of course, like Katarina Fanders, like Natasha Jonas, um, now, like Eva Brodnicker as well, Delphine Pursum potentially at 130 pounds. This division is absolutely red hot for women's boxing right now, and this is a great, great fight. Last time out, we saw Terry Harper in one of the fights of the year against Natasha Jonas. Now, she has a WBC mandatory challenger against Katarina Fanders. Of course, we have to thank Anissi Sowland and, and Sowland Promotions as well for helping us make this fight. Brilliant fight, brilliant fight between two great fighters and two great athletes. Terry, I'm going to start with you as well. This is a fight I think you have to be excited about. Um, Katerina comes with all action, big opportunity for her, of course, mandatory challenger, and a very tough fight for you on Saturday. Yeah, um, I, I am very excited for this fight, and obviously the, the fight I had last with Tasha, I've learned a lot from that, so... Um, I know that Fanders is coming over and she's going to throw a kitchen sink at me and uh, she's going to try and take that title away from me, but um, I'm just, I'm just going to make sure I stay champion. You think that, obviously, of course, with the two-minute rounds as well, we see that the intensity of these fights is something that the fans love to see. Of course, you against Natasha Jonas was non-stop. Looking at her style, do you expect the same kind of intensity in this fight as well? We saw the fight with Rachel Ball. You see the footage of her training. She's, she's all action. It's going to be a very fast pace. Yeah, from, from what we've been studying and watching over, over camp, um, Fanders, she's very good coming forward. Um, she's a very game opponent. So that's just something we've got to be careful of, especially watching out for her backhand. So. When you look at the division right now, of course, you know, Michaela Mai, your biggest fan, recently uh, won the World Championship against Eva Brodnicka with Troy, with Hamadouchi. Just so many big challenges ahead. You know, I've seen, I know you're off social media now, but sort of she's almost been goading you on there. Are you solely focused for this fight? Because I guess going into the Natasha Jonas fight, you were on a real crest of the wave. Everyone was talking about you being the best in the division and talking about the big unifications. And obviously, it nearly come unstuck this night. So 
on that night. So for, for you, it's just purely to focus on Fenders and Saturday night. Yeah, a mistake we've, we've made in the past is um, looking beyond the fight that, I've, that we're coming up, um, looking for future plans, whereas this fight we've just fully focused on Fanders, getting the job done on, the, on Saturday night, and um, that's when Andrew will tell me what I do next. Katarina, welcome, welcome. Um, big opportunity for you as well, and a lot of people looking forward to this fight. We expect a great fight on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. And yes, as you say, it's a great opportunity and I've been waiting long for this. So yeah, I, I, I'm really excited for Saturday. Tell us about women's boxing, particularly in Scandinavia and, and you know, where you've boxed around the world as well. We've seen a huge explosion, of course, in Britain and, and in Ireland with Katie Taylor, but tremendous times. You know, now, of course, this fight has three women's world championship fights on, but big opportunities and obviously becoming world champion, particularly in this weight class, would be huge for you and, and really life changing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's, it's a really amazing thing to see how, how female boxing is growing like, like it is. And, you know, uh, it's always good to have good examples like, you know, the, the great female fighters that we have right now. And of course, in, in Norway, we had for many years, we had Cecilia Breckhus and uh, she has made a lot for boxing in Norway as well and, and, and Scandinavia. So, um, yeah, it's great to be part of this and great to see that we're, you know, having the main events on, <laughs> on this kind of shows. Yeah. You look like you, you love your training. You look like you love your boxing. You, you always have a smile on your face. You look in tremendous shape as well going into this fight. This is your big opportunity. You have to make it count. How much would it mean to you to become a WBC world champion on Saturday? Oh, it would, be, well, it, it would mean everything. I mean, it's what I've been working for during years, actually. And uh, yeah, as you say, I, I really enjoy training. Uh, that's what I enjoy, I enjoy the most. So, um, you know, for me, it's not like hard work. I, I really enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, it, it would mean a lot, yes. Great, thank you. And finally, <laughs> Terry, question to you. Hungry challenger over there champion, still got the hunger, still got the desire, looking to make a statement. Do you feel like you have to almost prove some people wrong on Saturday night? Are there a few doubters about Terry Harper coming in? Are you fully focused to regain and retain your belts on Saturday? Yeah, I, I definitely feel like I've got a lot to prove um, from the last performance. I've seen a few people on social media saying I can't even box, which I'm not doing bad for someone who can't box. Um, but yeah, I just, for me, it's it's I just want to prove it to myself and that I belong up on this elite, elite level. Well, you do. Current world champion in a great fight against your mandatory challenger, Terry Harper against Katarina Fanders, the second of our triple header on Saturday night for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. If you could come to these uh, spots here for a head-to-head, -head, please. Thank you. the unified, undisputed, lightweight world championships between Katie Taylor, Miriam Gutierrez. Welcome, Miriam, the mandatory challenger for one of those belts, the WBA mandatory challenger on Saturday night. Katie, I'm going to start with you. You look relaxed, you look fresh, you look ready. I did see you eating fish and chips out there and mushy peas, but a fast turnaround from you. A great fight, a fight camp against a Pursoon and straight back in there, ready to go. Yeah, it's great. Um, I was uh, so happy to, to obviously get another fight before Christmas and I felt like I was ready and prepared to actually step in so soon. Uh, I didn't feel like I took too many heavy shots, thankfully, in the last fight. fight so um, I went straight back to Connecticut and, and started training for this fight. And um, it's an absolute privilege to be here, obviously, and to be headlining such a, a big, big show at the weekend and a stark show, really. Um, you know, I never thought four years ago when I turned pro that we, we'd see three, three female world title fights on, on one card. So this is absolutely huge. Well, you've pushed those boundaries. And, and one thing I've learned about you is you don't really take no for an answer. You know, when you want something, you go and get it. And mm. I remember, you know, visiting Ireland recently when I saw you over there with Brian. Mm. And basically, you wouldn't leave me alone or go home until I gave you a fight date <laughs> this year. You know, yeah. for you, it's just, this is your life, isn't it? This is everything. You don't want to be 
you know, I know you love your family, you like a couple of weeks yeah. with them, but you just want to be in the gym and you want to be competing. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, I guess, the competitive nature. You know, I want to, uh, you know, always um, make history in the sport. I want to leave a great legacy in the sport. And to do that, you have to be an active fighter. You have to take risks in the sport and you have to continue to push on. And um, and that's exactly what I want to do. I, I, it's a, a great opportunity for, for both of us out here at the weekend. And I want to obviously um, continue to, to, to make history, as I said. Back to the venue where you made your professional debut, ironically, on, on Saturday night. I remember putting that fight on, I think four rounds, and people thought we were mad. You know, yeah. we put you on as main event, you remember, and yeah. you know, we had huge Irish support there as well. It seems like years ago, and, and it yeah. seems that we were so far off the pace yeah. at the time. You know, when we look here at, at three women's world yeah. championship fights, you, you must be proud of the work that you put in as well, because you did pave the way for that. I know you're very humble and you don't see that as well, but secretly, is there part of you that gets a very warm feeling to see not just where your career is now, but where women's boxing is? Yeah, this is what it's all about, really. Um, yeah, we're in the sport to actually inspire the next generation, and um, we're in the sport to obviously, obviously leave a legacy, and, and uh, I think all the female fighters in the world right now are, are making all the noise in, the, in boxing right now, which is absolutely incredible. I think, um, you know, if you walked around the UK right now and, and you asked the general public who their favourite fighters were, they might say Terry Harper, they might say the likes of Savannah Marshall, and that's, uh, that to me is absolutely incredible that the, the, the female fighters around the world are actually um, um, household names right now, and that's what it's all about. Talk about your fight on Saturday, of course. Every time you step into the ring, you tend to be a favourite. You are a big favourite in this fight, but also you and Ross and Brian know the ability of Miriam Gutierrez, know the strength, know that she's got a great team. She's very, very hungry, and this is a massive chance for her to get a major scalp and become world champion. Expect a tough night. Yeah, of course. There's no easy fight at this stage in the game. Um, every single belt is on the line over the weekend. Um, this is a huge opportunity for her, and it's obviously a big opportunity for, for myself as well. Um, I think complacency in boxing and, and, and any sport is, is very, very dangerous, and I don't go into any fight complacent. This is a huge fight for me, and I'm, I'm ready for whatever comes my way on Saturday evening. Finally, you, do, you, do you feel the pressure? You know, you are really the main reason that, that we're in this position. You have all the belts. There is a scalp on your head, you know, and, and I do feel that people raise their games in those fights. You know, we saw it against Bassoon twice. We saw it against Lenard too, against Volonti, you know, and we'll see it from Gutierrez. Expect the very best that you've seen from her so far to, to come to the ring on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I really feel like people haven't seen the best of me yet as well. So hopefully people will see the best of me in, in, in the fights to come as well. So. Um, yeah, this is obviously a huge, huge fight. I'm expecting the best um, from my opponent and, um, you know, may the best fighter win. Miriam, welcome, welcome. Um, you look in tremendous shape, very, very strong. Uh, you're undefeated, won every fight quite easily. On Saturday night, this is a big, big challenge. You seem and your team seem to be ready for the challenge. Bienvenido, primeramente. Me parece que estás en muy buena forma. Eh, una, eres invicta y estás en una buena situación. Supongo que es un gran reto para ti, pero con ganas de, de, de que empiece ya. Sí, la verdad es que tengo muchas ganas de que empiece ya porque se, se me está haciendo largo, y sobre todo metido aquí en esta burbuja eh, que es un poco diferente, pero con muchas ganas de que llegue el momento de la pelea. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, to the fight coming round. It's been a long, long wait, particularly being in a bubble. It's, it's a bit different, but I'm really looking forward to the fight and I can't wait for it to come round. A lot of fighters, um, you know, who either fight Katie or watch from the sidelines, look up to her as, you know, a, a star in the sport. How important is it not to give her too much respect in the ring on Saturday night and take this opportunity? Muchas de las peleadores que se enfrentan a Katie se, se admiran mucho y supongo que es un poco peligroso admirar demasiado y tienes que alejarte un poco de, de pensar así y, y centrarte en, en la pelea el, el sábado por la noche. Claro, en eso estoy enfocada, en centrarme totalmente en la pelea, aparte de mi admiración por ella, porque lo ha conseguido todo en amateur y en profesional, pero sinceramente hemos trabajado durante mucho tiempo para, para el, día de, el día 14. Of course, um, I'm extremely focused. That's not to say that I don't admire her. I've followed her both in the amateur ranks and now in the professional division. Um, but we've been working really, really, really hard for this, so I'm totally focused on this. And just a word for Spanish boxing as well. We've had some shows in Spain with The Zone. 
Um, this win in Spain would be huge for Spanish boxing and, and could you put you as one of the biggest stars in the country? So a massive opportunity for you on Saturday. Sí, una, una oportunidad enorme para ti. Hemos tenido unos shows con Tazón en España y supongo que te da famoso ¿no? eh, ganar esa pelea. Bueno, eh, es, la verdad que es algo súper bonito, que, que espero que durante tanto tiempo trabajado que ahora llegue la, la oportunidad y ahora mismo disfrutarla sobre todo desde el principio hasta el final. Of course, it's a, it's a lovely situation to be in and it's a great opportunity for me and I've been working really hard for it, so hopefully I can take advantage of this. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you very much. And finally, Katie, of course, we've all put the work in. Of course, we wouldn't be here without the support of Sky Sports uh, and their investment in, in women's sport and, of course, women's boxing as well. And great news that this fight broadcast across all their platforms on Saturday night to Sky subscribers, of course, but also on YouTube and Facebook and, and online as well. So great news for everybody and, of course, your fans back in Ireland as well. Yeah. And we hope this will, will attract a huge audience on Saturday. Yeah, what an amazing opportunity for everyone on the card, really. Uh, I know from myself growing up, I didn't have Sky Sports, for example. So um, we have a chance, obviously, to display our skills um, in front of a new, a new audience, I hope, and uh, another chance to inspire the next generation, uh, I think. And um, yeah, a lot more new fans are going to be watching it over the weekend, which is an incredible opportunity. I just want to point out she does have Sky Sports now, yeah. which is uh, really important. So, uh, uh, the undisputed lightweight world championship, Katie Taylor against Miriam Gutierrez, the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, the WBO, the Ring Magazine Championship, one of the great fighters of our generation, puts it all on the line again, live on Sky Sports and DAZN this Saturday. If we could just join us here for a head-to-head, -head, please. Thank you.